Nicholson, and with me tonight is Candy Clark, who I love. And this is Game Changers with me, Vicki Abelson. I'm gonna say my name twice. So now I have to say Candy Clark twice. I have to say Candy Clark, Candy Clark, so I say your name more. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> anyway, I, it's good to be here. And I'm so glad, we're in your house. We're, yeah, we're, in my we're, house. We're, 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 we made it very convenient for me, very inconvenient for her. In, it, well, okay. we've had some technical difficulties, so That's I'm why. sorry. I'm so, That's why we're late. So I'm sorry we're late. Wait, I'm making sure we're on though. Okay, I don't know why that's there, but, oh, see, there we are. Let me see. see? So, how, how, how do we look, everybody? So tell us how we look. I think we're a little washed out. Are we okay? Yeah. We're, we're, I, think we, I think we're still a little too bright. I think, yeah, thank you, Kristen. And see, now, I got these new contact lenses. So I, I had contact lenses that are called multifocal, mm -hmm. so that I could read I'm and see far. Can you see can see, right? Blue. So, Right, they're a little blue. So that way I could see far away and I could read without having to wear glasses because otherwise you don't have to wear readers. I don't have my contacts on. Yeah. Ah, there you So I hear a so voice, but I don't know who's yes. here. <laughs> so, so, uh, so I would be, yeah, I would not be able to do that. So meanwhile, so now I got, so I started getting blind with far away. So I went to take my driver's test and I couldn't see the eye chart. These are a mess. They're horrible. They're so dirty. It's your cleaners. So, do some advertising. Okay, so here we go. Rick And do you know what? Okay, do you know why there's this Kleenex box? Because it's for your course, Women, women Who Write. Yeah, but do you know why? Because when Mackenzie Phillips came to read for us, yes, your co-star from American Graffiti, when she came to read for us, she started crying. We 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 all cried. Oh, really? And so the women said, have Rick Smokey, who is my hero and my guardian angel, make us tissue boxes. And look, he did. And Mackenzie's on there somewhere. I don't know where she is, but she's on there somewhere. Because you can't see. Because I, I can't see. So I went to take my driver's test. I couldn't see because I, could, I couldn't see far enough. So I, I had to get stronger contact lenses so I can see far away. But now I, Nikki, I can't. Nobody run. cares. Nobody cares. Let's okay. get this. So, all right. And so Rick Smokey, who is my hero, and, and he's fabulous, and he's fantastic, and he makes all my stuff, my bookmarks my tissue boxes, my cards, and he will print anything. If you need anything printed, totally seriously. Okay. If you need anything printed, he will take care of you. Like Excellent. you're a goddess in his life. You will oh, be a goddess for him. And then my hairdresser. Okay, she's, she, okay, so did you see what her hairspray is called? Can you see? I can't say that out loud. Well, I can. It's called Fuck Off. And it's Nicole Venables of the Ruby Begonia Salon. And look at my hair. Say it about my hair, but you can't say it about the hairspray. I love that. Lynn Stewart, hi, Lynn. Uh, okay, so we have to talk about, do you know Lynn from American Graffiti? I sure where, do. And so you and Cindy and Lynn, because Lynn, yes. Lynn and Cindy go back to high school. They do. And so, but you guys are like the Three Musketeers, because every I see you guys all the time on Facebook. And I always, and I'm like, why aren't Lynn's I there? a good woman. She really is. Lynn is the best woman. She is, and she's really funny. She is really funny. She's Lynn, really for those, funny. anybody who's been on the moon, Lynn um, is... Um, Miss Yvonne from, from Pee Wee's Everything. Yes. And she's also Maya Rudolph's mommy in um, Bridesmaids, which is my kid's favorite thing. But my, my kids And she was with the Groundlings? Forever. Yeah, she's where done she a, got her training. She, and it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. Yes, Lynn's done everything. That she's woman works all, too much. She works a I'm lot. I'm so jealous. <laughs> And we love her, and she's, well, I mean, I love her, and I know you do, because I see you together all yeah, the time, but I love her madly. She's, gonna, she's be a, a good woman. She's going to be on the show. She says no to me every time I ask her. Because she's, so, she's busy, because she's always uh, working. Huh. So, I'm, like, I'm glad somebody is. But, um, so, okay, so you met, so, Mad Love, like, as soon as you guys met, like, have you been friends all this time? Yeah, since American Graffiti. Okay, so she let's. played Richard Dreyfuss' sister. Okay, so we have six degrees of separation all over the place. I wrote an article about Richard Dreyfuss. He has the same birthday as me, which is next week, October 29th. And um, did you, did, so he was very different back then because it was, he was breaking. Like everybody was just breaking then, right? Yeah. Nobody was a star yet. No, Ron Howard was our biggest star. And, and so, so how was Opie on that set? You know, he was, a, he was actually a real teenager. The rest of us were a little bit older uh. Uh, <laughs> from television. And he was really our biggest star at the time. Right. And uh, did they was, treat him differently? Did George? Did no, George? No. No. We were all. It was a very low budget film. Uh, I think I made like three hundred fifty dollars a week. Oh, I think. stop. No. And you know we would go to work about be picked up about four thirty in the afternoon and get in the back. afternoon. Oh. Yeah. 
and you know because you have to be ready to shoot when it starts getting dark right and we would get back to the hotel about six in the morning so it was a long shift and but um you know it was a lot of fun day in and you know, we had our drinkers, our troublemakers <laughs> that we like to <laughs> gossip about every morning. Did you hear about Harrison or Paula Matt? You know? uh, yes. And, Hi, and Paul's a Facebook friend, so he, he might is. be, he hey, be Paul. watching. Hi, Paul. Maybe yeah. he's watching. Harrison's Oops. not, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. But you never know. All right, before we get into all the American graffiti stuff, because I want to hear it all, but I want to know about you first. But before we even get into that, so Candy, are you single? Do you have a significant other? No, I have a boyfriend. His, His name boyfriend. is John. Yeah, well, that's very. Long. How long have you been with John? Uh, like eighteen years. Wow. I know. Wow. And but and he doesn't, you know, he doesn't do the internet or anything. So I don't post his pictures or talk about him on the internet. He has. He he's like a Mafia. private. He's like. <laughs> I love the fact that you've been together so long. That's wonderful. And lucky you that you're not single. Because I, I told you before we started talking about you, I wanted to talk about some stuff. But wait, I have to show this because Candy, let me take one. And uh, for, those, for those of you who, who, who don't know what this is from, please go watch uh, The Man Who Fell to Earth. Because, oh my God, I just watched it again this morning. Did and, you? Uh, yeah, Lynn said to me, you know, you should watch, you should watch it again because, because Candy really likes that movie. And he's like, I, no, really I do like, like that I movie. Really like that and movie. and uh, yeah, there's David. And um, we're going to talk about that because I just went, anyway, I'll tell you about that later. But, um, but what, I, what I wanted to talk to you about before we get to dive into your life and yes. your story okay. is because I, I'm single but you're not single but I okay so where'd you meet John at a at a car show at a hot rod show I do really? a lot of hot rod shows because yes. of American graffiti and uh, I met him at, at one of the shows so is he a hot rodder he used to be not anymore so did you okay so this is what I want to know because these days are kind of gone now how did you what happened so you're both there what happens he How's just it? came over to the table and he mm -hmm. bought an autograph and he was very, very cute and, uh, you know, in shape. And he said he could uh, touch his toes. And so I said, let me see that. <laughs> That's and then I asked him a few more times to do that. <laughs> yeah, maybe can yeah. bend over a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and, and so then we had uh, a little luncheon date mm -hmm. and that turned out okay. And. The rest is history, 18, 18, 18 years, years later. I, I love that. <laughs> so I, I was married for 20 years and then being single in midlife. And when I said I was in midlife to somebody yesterday, he goes, yeah, who do you know that lives to be 120? You're, well, you're, you're, you're in the, you're you're in the last know. chapter, honey. Um, Unfriend. <laughs> so, so, so anyway, so being single, I started being single in my 50s, um, meeting people, and Christine and I were talking about this on the way over here, LA, I have found everybody is just too cool for the room. Right. And so I go to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I, I, go to, I go to screenings, I go to music, I go to shows, I meet a lot of people. Either the men are all taken, or they're too cool for the room, or they're so What's that mean? Too what, what I mean cool is that they the don't approach. They don't, there's, connections really aren't, I, maybe it's me. It's not me, because the dating apps are thriving, and that's why everybody I know is on dating apps. So I'm on these dating apps, which is a very unnatural way to meet people. It is. You're it's, just like meeting strangers. It's It's, it's, it's just wrong. It's very creepy. And what happens is there's this false intimacy. You start writing, you see somebody's pictures, you start writing to them, and you feel like you know each other. You don't know each other. So, you know, I, I just had a very wild experience in the last couple of weeks. I have a friend who dated a guy for like four years and yeah. his whole story was a complete lie. This is the thing. Yeah. Every complete single... Complete lie. It was like... Oh, he was a complete for, stranger. For four years yeah. he got away with it? Yeah. Yeah, see, I find out That's fast. so I, creepy. I have discovered that every single man that I have connected with on those apps, every single man without exception has lied about something. Every single one. There's no exception to that rule. That's, Either age, yeah. <laughs> weight. Or what they do for I a can't blame them for lying about the weight. <laughs> but. Or, or else the, picture, the picture's from 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, that kind of stuff happens. But anyway, so w what my question to everybody is tonight, what, I, what I'm sort of mulling over, and I'm, my next article is going to be on this, is 
I decided to choose joy. So I didn't so know. So you went. So what? You went to the, who's joy? So, so joy is not a person. Talk about that? <laughs> well, no. What I what I want to ask you, okay, is if you don't like, I didn't have all the answers to so all my. So tell me about joy. <laughs> I What's her French, last name? I had a friend, Champagne Joy, but she passed away last year from oh. cancer. But I love Champagne. Um, she was, yeah, wonderful woman. So, all right. Now, so, so you now chose Joy. Yeah. So, so I anyway. decided to choose. So when in doubt, I didn't know, I didn't have all the information. I knew I was probably being lied to about at least one thing. But I decided to. Like the wife? Like, well, you know, you, you don't know that stuff. I mean, I could do as much. I did, I do my research. So if, if they have like an Instagram and like for five years there's no woman on that Instagram, unlikely there's a wife. You'd think she'd demand a picture yeah. or two, right? What, what woman's gonna be with a guy that many years, right, Christina? Yeah, You're gonna yeah. demand, you demand Tony put up at least one picture. I put it there for him. Yeah. yeah, you put it there for him, there you go. So if somebody doesn't have any pictures of a woman, it, you know, that's kind of an indication they're not married. Um, but anyway, I decided to take this risk, and I took this risk, and I and it was a lot of fun. I, you know, I I took a risk to an extent, but it was wild, crazy fun. It was fabulous fun. But it turned out he was kind of a shit, and it's his birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Happy shit! Birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he was kind of a shit, but but the part nobody's of it, perfect. Nobody's perfect, and uh, and he could probably be tamed down a little bit. Well, he's 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 back in Rome. He was. Oh, but nice. listen to this: a, a Orthodox Jewish Arab who lives who's, who is Italian. Hmm. It's a very weird combination. But that should have been all the information I needed at the time. I just noticed that the cord is not plugged into my phone, so it's going to die. So we should do that before we get much further. Thank you, Christina. Christina's back there. Hi, Christina. How are hey, you? Good. All right. Good. Fun so, to be here. But what I what, my question to you and to everybody yes. else is. <clears throat> Back to me. Uh, yeah. okay, we're going to get to you. We're going to get to your whole story. But I, uh, this is what I want to know because I'm going to write a piece about How many this. seconds do Scott, I have? Scott, listen. If you had to make a choice, because I've often made the safe choice, and I've often not chosen joy, and I've also gone with what I think to be right and what I think to be the expected behavior rather than just reckless abandon, go for joy. What, what's your, what, how, do you, how are you in life? What, what, what kind, I mean, I've seen, you've made some wild choices. How am I in well, life? Huh. Yeah. Well, is it you know, I'm fairly happy. Uh, you know, uh, I try not to absorb too much uh, angst or grief. Uh, I uh, are the world's problems, you know, because I can easily sink. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have to make a choice, let's say. Between what let's, and what? Okay, so let's say you have an opportunity for something that sounds really fun but you don't have all the information and you don't know if it's I the do right. It. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So I'm kind and of... If it sounds fun, yeah, count me in. <laughs> all right. So, so choosing joy. That, that, that's, that's, that's where I'm at. I'm, yeah. I'm about choosing joy. There, what were you choosing before? Well, because I was being safer and I was doing so you the right... Being I was being yourself? Doing, well, I was being myself, but I was making... I was trying to make right choices and they weren't always the most fun choices. And also, I probably, I don't want to say, I don't think there are any mistakes in life. I don't think we can make a mistake. Everything takes us where we're going and we learn lessons and right. there's a reason right. for everything, right. right? So I don't want to bash myself for anything I've done in the past, but going forward, I'm trying to be more daring, more fun, more willing to take a risk. And then, you know, when, when the shit hits the fan, it doesn't feel so good. It's not so wonderful, but you know, you, I, you survive, right? You survive. Yeah, yeah. We go on. So let's get back to you. All right. Um. I'm, um. Okay. So so little Candy Clark. Where, where, little Candy. Where, where, yes. where is li little Candy Clark? Where does little Candy Clark grow up? I grew up in Fort Worth, Texas. I was the eldest of. I am <laughs> not was, but I still am the oldest of five. Four wow. brothers. Wow. And. Um, Grew up uh, very, well, I had a, a father who was a heavy, heavy drinker, mm -hmm. call him an alcoholic, and, um, you know, he left uh, and moved to California when I was about 12, mm -hmm. and we were very happy to see him leave, uh. 
And um, and then that was kind How of. Did your mother manage all of you? We struggled. Mm -hmm. We struggled because uh, at that time there was no way to get child support or anything. Really? And so yeah, that. Okay. Yeah, there was no way to track anyone, you know, uh -huh. once they once left. they split. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if they didn't want to be found, it was a, a whole different era. Um, but anyway, my dad was a, a really good chef, and mm -hmm. uh, he always had he was a really good cook. Mm -hmm. But uh, he had the big problem of heavy drinking. Yeah. And so as a result, in my teenage years, I became a, a teenage alcoholic. And, um, you know, a heavy drinker trying to uh, fit in, I guess, and escape. And, uh, you know, and Texas is a, at that time was a very heavy drinking uh, state. You, you mean know, it's they, not anymore? Well, it, it, back then it was uh, bring your own bottle and the bars would sell setups. Oh. And they changed that. They finally realized that there was more money selling liquor and also you could monitor it and not, you well, know. Did they do that for some religious reason? Why, why, do you know why they did that to begin with? Well, I guess, you know, the, uh, the Baptists, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. And the, the, you know, they had strange, uh, you know, people are going to drink anyway. So you might as well, you know, sell the whole drink rather than just sell the Coke. There's no real money in a Coke. And when you have a teenagers pouring their own drinks, they're going to pour them really strong. Mm -hmm. And number two was uh, if you got caught with an open bottle in your car, there was a heavy fine. So, of course, you had to drink the whole bottle. Uh, but <laughs> I <laughs> knew there was a reason and that for was, that story. That was <laughs> the, you know, I'm so glad that Mothers Against Drunk Driving <laughs> happened because there was a lot of drunk driving and that was before seat belts and there was oh, yeah, a lot yeah, of accidents yeah. and mm -hmm. all of that and but did you get in trouble when you were a kid like, like arrested no i was never arrested um my friend i had a friend who was arrested we were going to go to new york city uh on a youth fair ticket uh i was 19 and we had planned this uh I had, we had a one-way ticket to New York City, and she got ticket. arrested for shoplifting the night we were going to leave, the day we were going to leave. So I went by myself to New York City. Did you really? Yeah. With a one-way ticket? With a one-way ticket. And what and happened? And I was just going to stay for two weeks yeah. and check it out. But when, when, when the plane was coming down to land at the airport, I looked out the window, and New York City was all, it was dawn, and the lighting was all pink and gold, mm. and I thought... I'm never going back to Fort Worth. Wow. I'm never going back. And did you not? No. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. I lived there for four years. And from there, I got into modeling. I lived at the Y for a while. The y. Okay, so what, what, what was your first dream? Like, what did you want to be when you grew up, when you were a little kid? I wanted to be a secretary receptionist. Uh, I did. <laughs> Well, that's, well, that's a dream, and you know, Fort Worth, that was a good dream. Okay, and you so know, how I did, took when, typing in high school. So and, even in high school, you still wanted to do that? Well, that was about the only job opportunities there were. Did you do school plays? No. 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 I was on, uh, on the fringe of society and, you know, high school society. Were you a cheerleader? Was, or no, was, no. I was <laughs> an outcast. I was a freaking teenage alcoholic. <laughs> you know, late nights and, you know... The one thing I did take pride in myself, I never missed a day. I would go with that biggest hangover. Wow. And just kind of sleep through <laughs> class, but I never missed a day. Wow. It's just like weird mentality. But um, wow. I always showed up. Okay, so you always showed up. And you wanted to be a secretary <laughs> receptionist. Then 19, yes. you're, not in you're in college, you're not in college. No, I had a, I had a job after, no, no, no. college. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Well, I well, was a did you really have, bad student. Did you have a job as a secretary? I did. Oh, a so front you, desk too. So you I was the first dream. person you saw. <laughs> you know, smudged, but there I was. <laughs> okay, so, so you get to New York. Yes. And do you want to be a secretary receptionist in New York? What do you want to be when you get well, to New York? Well, I, I really didn't know. I was just like Joe Buck in Midnight Cowboy mm -hmm. looking up at all the buildings like, wow, this is great. And you're alone. Yeah. And do you have enough money to like stay? No, I kind of, uh, well, there was one guy named Peter, and I, I had, my friend Judy and I had done some modeling at the Dallas Apparel Mart, and uh, we worked for Peter, mm -hmm. and um, he said, 
if you're ever in New York, look me up. And he gave us a card, you know. You know how people say that, yeah. and they don't really mean it. <laughs> and they don't expect to ever hear from you. <laughs> Hello, Peter. <laughs> you said it was ever in New York to look you up. So anyway, I couch surfed there, and it was back in the 19... I lived there in 68 through 71. And that was the kind of the hippie era, oh, yeah. and, you know, the freewheeling and sleep on people's sofas. And, you know, you're young enough, you don't get that stiff on, you know, <laughs> stuff. You know, you're pretty flexible. And, you know, it was, uh, and finally wound up with a little job. I wanted to be a model because, mm -hmm. you know, there was a lot of modeling going on in New York. And I barely made the height five foot seven. And uh, you had to be five foot seven and above. Uh huh. And um, gosh, did you have like the? What was your look? Did you have okay? Because that was like I was like a carbon copy of Twiggy. I was just yeah. gonna say Twiggy. And I had the I black was... black lashes, kind of. Oh my god! Look. Did yeah. you have the short hair? I had yes. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! I remember getting a sassoon haircut in Fort Worth, Texas, oh, yeah. and I cried because she butchered me. <laughs> You know, I wanted that Sassoon look, and, you know, Fort Worth Sassoon was not the same as a Sassoon. Sassoon. I had the Sassoon. I had, I had a terrible Sassoon. Yeah, it was so my, bad. Mine was not Mine was like, 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 oh, this. my God. Yeah, anyway, so, um, you know, I really had thought Twiggy was, you know, she was a superstar. She was so skinny. Were you that skinny? I was, was pretty so thin. Skinny. I was pretty thin. I actually saw you naked today. You were, you were very thin. <laughs> I watched The Man Who Fell to Earth. Full frontal! Her and David Bowie. Oh my God, we'll get to that. So bad. She's so, feeling exposed. She had yeah. the most, you, you, your body, forget about well, it. Well, I, I had never. been, I had been sick. I had been sick. What well, kind of sick? I had uh, infectious hepatitis. Oh. And so that was my first job. I had lost a job called Report to the Commissioner. The, I mean, I'm jumping around in history here. <laughs> this is after modeling and when I went to California. But anyway, um, I had been sick with hepatitis, and um, so I oh, lost before a lot the of man who fell to earth. Yes. Oh, okay. And You're I lost very a, skinny. Yeah, I was like a hundred and thirteen pounds. Oh, then, Jesus! Just like a spider. <laughs> and, I, and there's a line in the movie where you say something about he's too thin and you're prompting him yeah. to eat something. And you're you, too you, thin. Were, you were just you're as too thin. thin. <laughs> Um, I was she was to yelling talk. at David Bowie to put yeah. her on weight while anyway. they were. Okay, so, so you start modeling. Yes, I New York. slowly but surely break through. And I had an apartment on uh, 127 East 34th Street, and that apartment's still there. Five floor walk up, and um, <laughs> it was $125 a month, and I still had to get a roommate. <laughs> Wow. I had to have someone to split the rent. Even that was a lot of money for me. Wow. Yeah, and I, I was diagonally, I was on, uh, diagonally across from Bickford's, and I used to sit in my window and watch the uh, pimps and the prostitutes because it was an all-night all restaurant. Wait, what, what Bickford's. was the cross street, 34th and uh, And Lexington. Okay. Park and my, Lex. Yeah, my mother lived on 35th and Park, so I yeah, knew Park and Lex. So, so, yeah, so, yeah, so there's the... So there's Bickford's a, was an all-night, 24-hour... Uh, like you could get three eggs and some eggs and, and some bacon and toast for like, I don't know, two dollars. It used to be so, such a good price for poor people. And <laughs> so, so were you always able to make the rent? Were you working in I, When I got a roommate, it became a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So it was like basically one room with a, what they called a bedroom, but it was basically a skinny closet. It was about the width of this table. The uh, bedroom. Yeah. And I had a roommate named Maureen, and her dad built us bunk beds, which was Aww. really nice. Aww. And, uh, Aww. Aww. <laughs> That's sweet. Yeah, it was really nice. And uh, I had several different roommates. Um, but yeah, we made the rent. And you st are you still drinking heavily? <laughs> <laughs> Like, how are you affording the booze and the apartment in New York? Oh, back then. No, I... Oh, I thought you meant now. No, I meant then. I've cleaned when up my act pretty no, good. When, no, when you were in New York. No, uh, you know, in the... From 68 to, through 71, it, drinking was passe. No, you had to be smoking pot and doing acid. There you oh, go! Of course! <laughs> well, I'm a marijuana addict. I know from these things. Still? So, no, I, I'm oh sober goodness. a long time. But, but then... 
a smoking pot and dropping acid. Yes, that, that, that was, was that was it. Yeah. Anyway, you know, and eventually, in between, uh, I worked for a man named. <laughs> Was how it? did you get? How did you get your first modeling gig? What What, what was that? Gosh, like? I don't remember that. Um, uh, I mean, how did you start? I mean, because here you, did I have you have my pictures? portfolio in the back room. Oh. I'll show you. Okay. Did you? Uh, so how did I you had get to your build pictures? a portfolio, right? Which is where you uh, go do a photo session with beginning photographers. Okay. To build their portfolio too. So you, and I was real stiff the first year. I I had no idea. I thought the camera. I thought you froze for the camera. And so I have all these like bug eyed <laughs> pictures. And then one day, it like after a year, it mm -hmm. dawned on me no, the camera can freeze you. You can just keep moving and, you know, it'll mm -hmm. snap away. And once I had that realization, modeling became a lot of fun. Before that, it was pretty much torture. Uh -huh. And, you know, nerve wracking. And uh, I think I. So, what kind of model? Were you doing print? Were you doing. Yeah, I was doing print. Mm -hmm. and I did a few commercials. And. Uh, did I you was have an agent? Print. Yeah. I had. Uh, uh, I was with Ford's for a while, nice. Stewart. Um, Zoli was my last agent. Huge. Yeah, Zoli. Well, okay, was, so how did, how did the segue. And, and so, did you know people in New York? Or were you. Did, no, did no. You, so what was that like? Just Peter. Just good old <laughs> and Peter. And I didn't know him, really. So but. how how was that socially for you, uh, being in this big Oh, city? I got right into the scene, <laughs> believe me. Okay. I had found my world. You mm -hmm. know, when I looked at New York City from the sky, I mm -hmm. knew that this was where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was, back then it was real easy to meet people, you yeah. know, and all the couch surfing and... It was not a dangerous time. It wasn't a time with a lot of scary people. Mm -hmm. You know, you could just hook up with someone or be walk down the street with someone. And there wasn't any, it was more love and peace. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't bad vibes. Like, you know, you wouldn't dare do that now. Right. And, uh, you know, it was a different time, a really nice time, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I remember it. So, okay, so, so you're modeling. How, how does that segue into acting? Well, I, I, want, I had heard that uh, you could get into, um, you know, crowd scenes. What, extra work. Okay. That's what I wanted to do. To supplement my modeling, I wanted to be an extra. Had you ever taken an acting class? No. No. I this had, is unbelievable. No, <laughs> Nominated for an Academy Award. No acting classes. <laughs> no high school plays. This is this is mind blowing. Okay. This is just you know Real life. dropping into stuff. Wow. Uh, so anyway, I was an extra in a crowd of about two hundred people mm -hmm. in a Harry Keller Kellerman. Uh, it was a, a film called Who Is Harry Kellerman uh -huh. and Why Is He Saying? It was a Dustin Hoffman film. Mm -hmm. Your old boyfriend. <laughs> And, <laughs> yeah, cute guy. Uh -huh. Anyway, um, so I was in a crowd scene of about 200 people, mm -hmm. and we just kept doing this scene of coming through a revolving door, a big crowd of us, like the office had let out, and mm -hmm. everyone's leaving mm -hmm. and going for the weekend. His thing was he was dropping this cello or violin case, and he would, you know, get kicked by the crowd, and we just did that over and over again, like dozens of times but I loved it you know there was a table full of donuts and we're talking to the other extras and hanging out and I decided I want to do more extra okay. work so uh, I went back to Lynn Stallmaster's office who got me that gig mm -hmm. and I s said here's my picture I want to do more extra work and there was a man there and he said uh, Lynn Stallmaster said I'd like to introduce you to my friend Fred Roos and I'm like Hi, how are you? And Fred Roos, I'm telling you, it's a freewheeling time. He said, hey, you want to go with me to uh, go watch him shoot the screen test for The Godfather? Sure. Oh, stop <laughs> this right now. Now, sure. was the book, well, the book was already out. Did you know, that, but you didn't know what The Godfather was at that point, did you? Um, well, did it you just know? sounded interesting uh -huh. to go shoot, you know, watch screen tests. Okay. You know, I'm like, hey, didn't have anything to do that day. Sounds good. So we went out to Brooklyn or Queens or somewhere, and 
I met Francis Coppola and watched Jimmy Kahn and all these actors doing screen tests. You just meet Francis yeah. Coppola. Yeah. 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 And um, the you know I became like the little pet you know the to Francis and I uh, went back the next day and the next day and uh, then Fred Roos. Did you date him? Were you um, have a little romance there with Francis? Yeah. No. No. Okay. Well, you said the little pet. I don't know what that. No, means. the pet. You know, like the little, the little mascot. Pet. Okay. You know, you mm -hmm. have a. You know, someone that comes, a kid that comes to the set mm -hmm. and, you know, hangs out, or like comes and goes. like 20 ish? Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, so Fred Roos mm -hmm. was going there too. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of got to know these people. And then Fred Roos went back to California and uh, he started calling and he wanted me to try out for this. Uh, part in this movie called Fat City. I'm like, no, no, I just want to be an extra. I don't want to try Wait, out. Wh why would that be? I don't know, because Fred Roos is a, was a, at that time the casting director of But no, California. but why would you not want to do it? Because I was just getting established as a model. Okay. And I didn't feel like, you know, changing careers okay. or even trying out. And besides, I didn't know anything about acting. And so, um, you know, he was always calling. And then he, he, I kept saying, no, I don't want to do this. Wow. And I guess that was, got him more interested. I don't know, but he never gave up. <laughs> well, it sounds like he was kind of meant to be in your life. And kind yeah. of, he, that, did, that was <laughs> yeah. no accident that that happened. Anyway, so uh, I said, oh, okay. he mm -hmm. wanted me to come to California. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I could barely make rent. I was going to say, come to California mm -hmm. and try out for this part. And he sent the, what they call sides, mm -hmm. you know, a, a scenes. And they were really hard. One, it was a crying scene. That's hard. For yeah. Don't trained. know how to do that. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, <laughs> I'll come. But I thought I was driving a hard bargain when I said, I want to go to Disneyland. <laughs> and I want to go to the Academy Awards. <laughs> And he said, I thought I was like, that was going to be the deal breaker. And he said, okay. I'm like, no. You I said, I want to go to the Academy Awards? Yeah, I want to go to the Academy Awards and I want to go to Disneyland. I thought that would be the deal breaker. That like something really impossible. Two things really impossible. <laughs> and so he said, okay. And so next thing I know, I pay my way out and I'm here in California. And, and where are you staying? Like how are you staying? I don't even remember. Did he arrange something for you? Probably, but mm -hmm. I don't really remember. I was mm -hmm. such a nervous wreck. Mm -hmm. Now I've got myself into deep, you know, something really deep. Now, did you, you didn't leave New York permanently. This was just going to be like I was like just going to, uh, you know, mm -hmm. do my end of the bargain, go to the Disneyland, which my, was my first <laughs> reason to come, and the Academy Awards. So comes time for, and I did. I went to the Academy. I mean, I went to the Academy Awards. Well, and so I was on the who, fifth balcony at the who, Shrine Auditorium. Who, who won that year? Do you remember? No. Nope. Wow. I was so bedazzled. You oh know, I was like, oh. I'd rented a pair of binoculars down in the lobby <laughs> <laughs> for five bucks, and I'm in the like the fifth balcony behind a pillar. Oh my! I guess that was the best Fred could do. But I was thrilled. Wow. Looking at you know at actors and just. It was just great. That's so it was cool. just in heaven. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, the the next thing was Disneyland, mm -hmm. and you know that was fantastic. Fred had an assistant named Lloyd mm -hmm. who, who drove me there. Poor Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> Did he go on the rides with you? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Lloyd was very amenable, mm -hmm. and Lloyd introduced me to uh, the health food world, which. You know, I knew nothing about in New York City. Mm -hmm. And, you know... That was already going on out here? Yeah, it was. Uh -huh. back, back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I became a, a, a fan of Air One, rest, uh, oh, yeah. Air One and um, all kinds of the source. Mm -hmm. And all kind of, there was a restaurant called Help. And I just got really into the health food world. Anyway, so I went to Disneyland. I bought a hat that said Disneyland. And I thought... <laughs> I'm going to wear this hat when I go on the audition. <laughs> and when it comes to the crying, I'm just going to duck my head and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
So I, my day comes, I'm a nervous wreck. I wore a silk blouse, which was exceedingly hot. I'm mm. sweating, it's like summer. I go in and there's Fred Roos, there's John Houston, Ray Stark, oh. a guy named David Dworsky. And uh, I look at Fred for like, help. And he just looks at me like he never met me before. Oh. No help, <laughs> no friendly face, no nothing. Oh. So I'm like just reading as fast as I can, like, you know, just actually reading. I thought that was, you know, they say it's a reading, you yeah. know. <laughs> reading oh, the lines. You didn't know. And, and, then, and then I'm like supposed to cry at this point. <laughs> the hat goes. And then I jumped. It's John Houston. It's John Houston. It's Ray Stark. I didn't know these people. Right. All I know is this, I've just got to do this reading, you know, fulfill the oh, commitment you, you and get care. out. You don't I don't even care. care. You just I just want out. <laughs> so I get up, thank you, and then I like race to the elevator. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, I hear feet behind me, like, <laughs> I'm like, no, <laughs> shit. And I'm like pushing the button, and it's Fred Roos. <laughs> and he said, they want you to come back for a screen test. I'm like, I just want to be an extra. Oh, I just want to be an extra. This is so crazy. <laughs> nobody's ever said that. Yeah, nobody has ever said that. No one has no ever said those please. words in the history of the world. Yes. <laughs> just that's all I wanted. Anyway, yeah. so the next couple of weeks later, they're they're flying me out and I'm staying at the Chateau Marmont. Nice. <laughs> Oh God! Oh, you're still complaining. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, and I call my mother. I said, "You've got to come out here and help me memorize this." You know, I didn't know anything about memorizing mm -hmm. or how to. Or mm -hmm. Was a bad student in school. Mm -hmm. You know, never liked to study, <laughs> and it was very tedious. Anyway, we kind of finally got it memorized. It came the big day for the uh, screen test, and there's a. Uh, I go in, I meet uh, Margot Kidder and... Wow. Yeah, and who's the other actress? Jennifer Salt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jennifer Salt. Okay. And then there's me. And then there's Jeff Bridges. Aww. And I think, oh, he's cute. <laughs> Hell yeah. I think he's really cute and he's my acting partner. So I thought, well, I'll just model my way through this <laughs> scene. <laughs> You know, we're doing yeah. the dialogue, mm -hmm. and it's a cutaway car, and they have big cameras, and, you know, it's a night scene, and I'm trying to get uh, Jeff's character to marry me because I'm going to have a baby, and, you know, and I'm just kind of, like, modeling, and, <laughs> you know. Anyway, I get the part, and the next thing I know, I'm, we're going up to Stockton, California, and... You know, I'm working with Stacy Keach, Susan Terrell. Wait, which movie is this? It's called Fat City. Oh, that was my City. first job. Wow. <laughs> Your first job in with John, with John Houston, Houston and, and Jeff Bridges. And yeah, I don't know who these people are. These are just, you know, wow. strangers. Wow. Anyway, I was up in Stockton, California for two months, all expenses paid, you know, and it was great. Got a new boyfriend, Jeff Bridges. You oh, know. really? Everything's great. I'm like, this so, is so easy. All right, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're not rolling over this one so fast. So what was that like? I love Jeff Bridges. What was that, that like? That was fantastic. He's terrific. Great guy. Oh. And we were together for about four years. And <laughs> I love this story. We did story. the movie together, and I had no idea how to do acting. And so did he help you? I had a no. no. He, had, he he was kind of a beginner too, mm. but um, but he comes from the family where it was all. all but the they weren't talking acting every night I over guess. the you know <laughs> dinner table. <laughs> Jeff, you know, eat that a little with a little more excitement. <laughs> you know, no. Very nice family, mm -hmm. uh, Lloyd and Dorothy and Bo and wow. great people. Cindy. Anyway, so, so I know this story is totally off the wall. Well, no, this is a great this story. This is how so to fall on. into life, you know. You so, know like, so you fall into this movie. Now yeah. you fall into this relationship. Yeah. So while you're seeing Jeff <laughs> and you're doing this movie, what happens now? Well, I had a good sized part. But I didn't know how to do it. Okay. So the part kept getting whittled. Oh. And they brought in a coach named Jeff Corey. Mm -hmm. And he was supposed to, like, 
teach me how to act like overnight and it was impossible so I spent a lot of time you know angsting out and crying mm. and Jeff was made to do acting lessons with me and mm. it was you know but when I didn't have to be on set we had a lot of fun <laughs> <laughs> but I did notice the parts mm. got smaller and smaller which was fine really mm -hmm. and then uh and then I thought, wow, this acting is kind of easy, you know. You just like kind of go in, and they give you a job. And I'm gonna dump the modeling thing and move to California. Yeah, you got a boyfriend. I have a you boyfriend. I'm yeah, totally yeah, set up. I'm ready. Ready. Health food, and you know, <laughs> <laughs> a whole like flip. And um, how, so, how old like, are you a, now? Like I twenty don't know. little, twenty young, twenty young. And so I thought, wow, this is pretty easy. And, uh, you know, I wasn't taking any acting lessons or anything. I thought, you know, go on auditions. You know, I got a manager and an agent. And um, it sounds like things came easy to you. Yeah, my first half of my life was really uh, hard. Mm -hmm. But then the second chapter was things were loosening up. Okay. And, um, you know... But I quickly realized it took like a year to get the next job. Mm -hmm. And I think I got one room 222 in between <laughs> before I finally got American Graffiti. Okay, so how did that happen? Well, that was Fred Roos again, mm -hmm. and he was casting that. And, um, you know, I was pretty well beat up from not getting any work. So what, what were you, how were you surviving for that year? Was Jeff helping out? Like yeah, we were out? living together. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, mm -hmm. so, um, and Jeff was, he wasn't the big star that he is now, you know. Mm -hmm. He was still fairly, Struggling. fairly beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a little house, a small little place, you know, up in the Malibu Hills. Uh, he bought a little shack really and redid it and when I met him he was living in an apartment he had a Volkswagen bus and he taught me how to drive on that Volkswagen <laughs> bus and you know we we're just like That's really you know sweet. starting out mm -hmm. and um are you guys still friends oh yeah oh yeah uh, what was the question? Um, so what? Ha okay, so uh, so how were you making ends meet? So that's how you were doing it because you were living together. Yeah, we were living answer. together, mm -hmm. and you know, I was cooking beans and, and stuff like that, and Jeff was eating beans, and you know, <laughs> we were living like you know, young starting out people. Yeah, that's all right. And uh, yeah, we, yeah, stuff like that, mm -hmm. and um, uh, and so then how did so the anyway, graffiti happen? Uh, there was a I heard there oh. So anyway, Fred Roos was casting this movie called American Graffiti. So I was with uh, this great manager, Pat McQueenie, mm -hmm. wonderful woman. And uh, so she sent me out and I thought, by God, this time I'm dressing the part. So I had heard it was taking place in the 50s. So mm -hmm. I thought maybe that's the key. Dress like the character. <laughs> <laughs> so I have... A letterman sweater on, a chain with a ring around the neck, and blue jeans rolled up, you know, to the knee, and saddle oxfords and some bobby socks, and the hair pulled back in a ponytail. So I'm sitting in the outer lobby and with these other actors, and nobody's dressed for the part. <laughs> so I feel like a total idiot. And so I go in, and I'm meeting this man named George Lucas. He's oh, a little, God. little, tiny audience, uh, office, real small, maybe as big as this table, mm -hmm. half this table. And there's a desk, and then there's me, and my back is kind of against the wall. Wow. Like, maybe it was like a closet that they turned into an office. It was real small. And so I'm meeting him, and I'm, you know, dressed like... And George Lucas 19. isn't anybody. No, no. he's nobody, and mm -hmm. he's very, very quiet. Mm. And he's just looking at me, and I'm like, you know, I know I failed, so I'm mortified, and, you know, the meeting's over real quick. And it, it, I didn't do even you remember. Read, do you read for him? No, it was no. just like a in, meet in person oh, okay. and go away. Kind so of you were the one girl who walked in dressed. Yeah. Dre yeah okay. <laughs> so anyway, it's, uh, do you know, I go back, I call Pat, and I said, you know, I blew it again. <laughs> and so 
She's a, she was always so nice. Oh, don't worry about it. There'll be another appointment. Had you been going up to a lot of auditions? Yes, yeah, and yeah. failing. Oh, I was so yeah. bad. Well, no. And I'd always get really nervous and, you know, sweaty and, you know, freaked. And I, it was, mm -hmm. you know, you know, because I was failing over and over again. So I had, uh, you know, I was really petrified. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, I, uh, find out that the uh, American Graffiti is, takes place in the 60s. And I, I get a, a script and I read it, it's really good. And I'm like, I can identify with these people. Oh, wow. I know, mm -hmm. the, I know these characters, I know Debbie. You know, this is what she we did. You from back home in Texas? This is what yeah. we did in Texas. Right, right. I know these characters. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, <laughs> I begged Pat, you've got to get me back in to meet George. You've got to get me back in. So I go back in, and um, that's not easy to get back. No, in she once said they in. don't want to see the same people that mm -hmm. they passed on. They mm -hmm. don't. Somehow she got me back in, mm -hmm. and so I dress as myself, and you know I go in, and I didn't remind him like, hey, I was the <laughs> jerk here like, <laughs> two weeks ago with the ponytail. So was I just acted wise. like it was the first meeting, mm -hmm. and. Um, Lo and behold, the next thing I know, I'm doing a screen test. And did you read? Did you read with with Charlie? with Charlie? Okay, so it turns out I put a picture up there. Did you see it? Yeah, I, I saw it. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. And so um, I, uh, the day comes, and do you guys do you know that you have rapport with him? Mm -hmm. You don't. Know I that. have okay. never met him. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so it's the screen test takes place over at Dove Films which was Haskell Wexler's uh, commercial studio, mm -hmm. studio. and uh, there's like 200 actors there trying out because there's a, a big cast there's right, a lot of right, right. and so I see Judy Stranges from room 222 mm -hmm. which I'd mm -hmm. done or one room 222 mm -hmm. and I'm thinking God she's going to get it I just know it and um so I'm already, you know, whipped before I even try. <laughs> I'm all psyched down, you know, I'm not going to get this. Anyway, so my name gets called. I go into this alcove, and there's George Lucas, and there's Haskell Wexler. And George has this little pink video camera made out of plastic. And uh, there's a... <laughs> a uh, park bench and that's the car uh -huh. and I walk in and there's Charles Martin Smith and I think oh no I'm so much taller than him oh. you know they always hire the actor to be taller than the female mm -hmm. actors and I'm not going to get the part darn it so I just kind of go through the motions you know I just like threw it away well I'm not going to get this so I just kind of threw it away and apparently that's what they wanted. <laughs> wow. God. I love this. Apparently that's what they wanted. I love so this. I like, got the part. And, um, yeah. And did you know it was like this big, juicy, fabulous part? Yeah, I'd read the script. Yeah. I'd gotten the script, and that's why I so made that. you had the whole thing. Got oh, okay, you got the whole thing. Send me back. I thought with sides, they just send you like your scene. No, like I had it. somehow got a hold of the wow. whole script, and that's why I was insisting, you've got to send me back. You've got to send me back, Pat. So you knew before it was even shot that there was something very special about this movie. I know it was a script that I could identify. It was people I knew. These people, mm -hmm. you know, these people I I knew. Debbie, I was Debbie. <laughs> so so <laughs> so, how did you find out that you got the part? Uh, you know, I got the call, or Pat McQueen call, probably called me and said, "Were you, you know, surprised?" I was relieved, really. Mm -hmm. You know, it'd been a whole year since I had a job. You know, and I didn't want Pat to lose heart. And she was so nice. She always like you know encouraged me and. Thought I had potential. And you were telling us before we went on air, how much did you make on American Graffiti? I think I made like $350 a week. Nice. But it was, we were all making scale. Mm -hmm. And um, and so what was that set like? Because so many people became stars from that. Okay, so, so Ron Howard was the one. He was our he was only, the... you know, known actor, really. And uh, we all stayed at the Holiday Inn, and I remember... Uh, meeting Cindy Williams, you know, uh, for the first time, and uh, 
you know, all Mackenzie Phillips and, you did, know. Did you guys just all hit it off right we away? We all hit it off. It was a, a match made in heaven. It really was. And Charlie, you know, Charlie and I drove up to San Francisco in my Volkswagen and we broke down in Santa Barbara. I had to have my whole <laughs> engine overhauled. I remember seeing, because we took off real early in the morning because we want to get a jump start on driving to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Broke down in Santa Barbara. On a Sunday, we had to, somehow we found someone to overhaul the engine, you know, out of the garage. I don't know how we did it. Mm -hmm. It was long before cell phones and mm -hmm. everything. And uh, I remember seeing Charlie sleeping on the sidewalk because he was so tired. But mm -hmm. we finally arrived in uh, San Francisco about midnight, and they said, Oh, thank God you're here. You've got to get into wardrobe and try on clothes. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so tired. So, anyway, there was like three um, dresses that were from the secondhand stores and uh, that blue one fit me perfect, no alterations, this will do, and a sweater, and then I said I want a little uh, sweater guard, a little mm -hmm. chain, and um, I met the hairdresser, and she, it was her the idea. hair. It was her <laughs> hair was so fabulous. It was her idea, because she said it's gonna be shot at night, mm -hmm. and if you have blonde hair, it'll show up, you'll show up. So I thought, that, that's a good idea. And so I said, my hair is so straight, it won't hold a curl. And you know, that flip was so important yeah. to signify the era. Mm -hmm. so, um, so we tried on different wigs and that one wig, I said, this is it. <laughs> and it fantastic. held a curl. And it was, she said, yeah, it's yak hair. It'll oh hold a curl. <laughs> yak hair. Yak hair. Oh my yeah. God. No, it didn't, but it's fabulous, that hair. And it was like, and it was so small, it was like a child-sized wig. It was so tiny, you know, and so we had to <laughs> cut it up the back to make it fit and then kind of smoosh the hair around to kind of uh, uh, hide the, the split. And thank God for that wig because it served as a hat. It was so oh. cold oh. up in Petaluma. It was so foggy and so cold. And all I had was that little spaghetti strap dress and uh, that sweater, thank God, I thought, to get and a sweater. And isn't that all in one night? Isn't that like... The story takes place, but it took us 28 nights. And it was freezing. It's probably every night was like 40 or 50 degrees. Yeah. that's the, You were yeah. wearing a lot of clothes. No. And so finally, I begged them, I've got to have something on my legs. So they got me some like long john underwear. <laughs> and there's one scene where those underwear are showing. Really? Toad and I are rolling around in the front seat. Anyway, so we'd have to like pretend it was really hot and sultry and you're smoking our cigarettes and everything and then when they'd say cut Ooh, God, it's freezing. But Yeah, anyway. that, that's a really sweet scene when, yeah. when he's making a pass at you and then he thinks he's failed and you jump him kind of yeah. that's really sweet. He's gonna get us some liquor. Yeah. You know, I'm motivated. <laughs> but um yeah. And so, did you? Busy. So, did you, did you guys have the rapport that it looked like that you had? I mean, oh sure. Yeah, you know, yeah. he was a real good uh, partner to act against. He was real funny, mm -hmm. and uh, that haircut he hated it. It was like a flat top with mm -hmm. these fenders on the side, <laughs> and, and a lot of times on his days off, the fenders would be down. He wouldn't co come it back, and this flat. It was just the worst haircut. But anyway, it served him. Yeah, it served him. And so what was Harrison Ford like back then? Harrison was kind of moody and mm. dark. And I have some snaps. Of, you know, I brought my camera and I have a lot of snapshots of that time. And, you know, I snap pictures of people and there's so many glaring. <laughs> huh. You know, he'd always glare. <laughs> it didn't even like having his picture made back then. And was he still being a carpenter? He was being a carpenter. Then, yeah, he was he? a beginner. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, and how about making three hundred a week? Too. And how about Paul and Matt? Because Paul and Matt's really kind of it's his kind of he's he's a big part of that movie. Paul. Yeah, and Matt. he's you know yeah, the, war, the story kind of revolves around him mm -hmm. and the guys, and then the girls are. You know, and Mackenzie's so young in that. So she was like eleven. Yeah. So what was that like having like this kid on the set? Great. Yeah. She was not like I a kid. Love her. <laughs> she was like a thirty-year-old. She was oh. like one of us. Mm. You know, she had been around adults all her life, mm. and 
you know, grew Her up too fast. Her father, Thomas and the Papas. Yeah. yeah, John Phillips. Wonderful person. <laughs> anyway. Read the book. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, uh, so, uh, you know, she was... And so she was she up all night smoking she cigarettes. She was up all night too. She, has, all night. she was like eleven, and like like one of the gang. You kind of mm-hmm. lost track of how old she really was because right. she seemed very mature. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and so, did you and Cindy and Lynn, like the three of you, become like fast friends right then, or did that happen afterwards? Kind of uh, me, Cindy, uh, Ronnie, Richard. We were kind of. Together, and then there were the bad boys, Paul, Harrison, <laughs> Bo Hopkins. And so every night, you know, there would be something that they would do, like put beer bottles on top of the revolving holiday inside. <laughs> there was one incident where they threw a beer bottle out and it broke someone's uh, Cadillac windshield. Oh. You know, stuff like that, little scandalous things. Mm-hmm. But, um, and you guys so we would like be, just, just talk about them every day. So it was, uh, and what was George like on set? Uh, quiet, very quiet. Uh, we quickly learned that you were only going to get like one take, two takes wow. tops because it was a low budget film. Right. And so, was he a good director back then? I mean, did he? He just let us do. He we we do had it. a guy that named Gino Havens mm-hmm. that uh, if you were going to work that night, that um, he would run the lines with you and meet in one of the actors hotel rooms and you know the people that were in that scene would we'd sit on the floor and Gina would be sitting on the bed or something and we'd run the lines and that was basically the rehearsal and then we'd get to the set we'd run through it walk through it or sit through it in the car and do it and then we'd be shooting okay now you are a woman who has not had any acting lessons hasn't been in plays in school at that point I I you, think I had started a few acting lessons because you give a performance that is I wanted some water I gave you water you give this performance that is, that gets you an Academy Award nomination and is anybody on set helping you is is anybody guiding you or no. is this oh this is just you you're just doing this you is just me wow. and um you know, I ran the uh, campaign for an Academy Award. I thought, what? Well, you know, it's a business. Hell yeah. <laughs> and uh, a few people have copied my campaign and did it themselves. They were criticized, and I was kind of criticized were at you? the time. Yeah, because it seemed unseemly that, you know, you were. Were you the own. first person to ever do it? I. I'm not sure if I was the first person, but I thought, well, hey, I'm going to invest in my career, you know. And good for you. I, you know, I split my money between the Hollywood Reporter and the uh, Variety, mm-hmm. a little quarter-page ads. That's all I could afford, uh-huh. and it worked. It sure as hell. And Sally it. Kirkland copied my campaign. And Hi, Sally. Sally's a good. I love hey, Sally. Sally. Hi, Sally. <laughs> She did it, and she credited me. Wow. And then there was the other lady that was in that movie. Oh, darn, what was it? And it was about a, uh, it was kind of wintry scenes and trailers, and oh, I'll think of her name in it. Okay. And she she did the same thing, and she got criticized for it. Really? But back then, you know, the studio was not behind mm-hmm. American Graffiti. In fact, they thought it was going to be a straight to uh, video, uh, straight to drive in movie really and so so when did it become apparent that that was not when did it pick opening day (laughs) boom but they still didn't run any campaigns for it but it was a different world then you know the advertising for academy awards now is really out of control it's Mm -hmm. really crazy and they Mm -hmm. spend maybe millions Mm -hmm. to try to get in a in a an award, mm-hmm. but back then it was a lot more, you know, that's when Marlon Brando, you know, actors weren't even showing up for a lot of the, uh, uh, you know, ceremonies, mm-hmm. it was, and it's way more casual, mm-hmm. and you dressed yourself, you know, and you put on your own makeup, and you went to the Academy Awards, now and it's a whole production with a red carpet, and you know, and so how, bleachers. What was, the, what but, was that um, preparation like going to the Academy Awards as a nominee? Oh my! It God. was great. I, I was like, I'd never been 
hugged and kissed and I got telegrams which don't exist anymore but I got telegrams and uh, flowers and you know I was, and I went with Jeff and uh, I was just like on cloud nine for weeks 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 and uh, it was great. What, what was is great. that feeling like when they call your name at the Academy Awards? And all well, the what was really weird, my mother took a, a photo of, this, of the screen. Mm -hmm. And I've seen footage, you know, because thanks to the internet, you can see the footage. And they, you know, they announced the name Linda Blair. And they had a picture of her and, you know, all the other actors. Uh, was, it Sylvia she, was it for The Exorcist for her? Yeah, and uh -huh. Sylvia Sidney, Tatum O'Neill. And uh, there was another actress, I'm trying to think of her name, but I'm too excited. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so uh, so when they call my name, they focus on some lady in the audience. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know I was there. Yeah. You know, I only found out later. That's you know, funny. but yeah, they focused on someone else when they call my name, um, which is funny, I think. Anyway, um, my mother took a picture of. You know, finally, you know, it settled right. down and they had all the five contenders mm -hmm. there and I, my picture is there. My mother snapped a picture of the television set. But I always knew I wasn't going to win. I thought Sylvia Sidney was going to win. What movie was she up for? A uh, film called Summer Wishes, Winter Dreams. I remember that. So <laughs> I'm, I, I thought, I want to see what it looks like when someone wins the Academy Award, what their expression is. Mm -hmm. So I'm like looking down at her. And they said, and I just wanted to see her, like, her name being called. Uh -huh. And they said, and the winner is Tatum O'Neill. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> oh. Anyway, Tatum O'Neill went up. Hi, Tatum. And she took Tatum's it. a Facebook friend. She, yes. could, she could be watching. You don't know. <laughs> yeah. And she was like nine. <laughs> and she wow. went up there and took the Academy Award. And that was it. And, had, had and then they had the governor's ball, and that was really fun. And, and you weren't upset that... No, no, I knew I wasn't going to win. Yeah. You know, you just have a feeling. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to happen. So okay. I had no speech. I mean, if they'd call my name, I'd be up there, like, <laughs> hyperventilating and passing out. <laughs> so the first what person to actually faint on <laughs> stage. So, okay, so what happens... So now you're riding this great wave. What happens after American Graffiti? Well... Unbeknownst to me, I had gone, well, here's the story. Mm -hmm. Fat City and American Graffiti were playing at the Cartagena Film Festival. Okay. So prior to this mm -hmm. event, the Academy Awards, Jeff and I and all the graffiti people went down to Cartagena, Colombia. And, uh, you know, I went to the Board of Health and I said, you know, I'm going to go to South America. What shots do uh, I need? <laughs> This is the hepatitis story. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so he said, well, I think I'll, you'll need a smallpox vaccination. Mm -hmm. So I took that. You know, that's that one that blows leaves up the, yeah. and leaves the mark. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, there is hepatitis going on down there. Just watch out for people with yellow eyes. Oh. So, okay, <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> and, I, and so I was determined mm -hmm. not to eat the food. So mm -hmm. I brought peanut butter, crackers, all this stuff. All the other actors laugh at me, you know, I'm mm -hmm. like digging in, you know, they're all eating paella and mm -hmm. all the local food, and mm -hmm. I'm like peanut butter and crackers, <laughs> trying to be very careful. But what happened was this smallpox vaccination really took, I mean, that thing was big, mm -hmm. inflamed, you know, and of course everyone like, oh. Pats you on the shoulders so all day long. Anyway, I remember I was in the shower, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember water from the shower went into that. And I'm like, mm. uh oh. Then I thought, nah. A few weeks later, I'm starting to get these pains in my stomach, and I'm with a friend. We're at Dantana's, and I said, like, I just have these pains. You know, every time I eat, and he said, you're. Yeah, I'll go see a doctor. So I go see a doctor, and I knew I was in trouble when he said, you have to call someone. I'm putting you in the hospital right now. And he put a Kleenex over the receiver oh of the phone. God. I'm like, Pat. You know, Pat came and picked me up and took me 
when it wound up two weeks in St. John's Hospital and two weeks at Pat's house, you know, in bed, four weeks in bed. And I had, I had a job. I was supposed to do report to the commissioner. Uh -huh. And uh, I had to call all, you know, the doctor said, you have to call all these people. That's, I'd gone to the Academy Awards and I remember looking in the mirror and thinking, wow, nice tan. <laughs> Really? I said, wow, you look really good. Where'd you get that tan? Like a little hepatitis. Yeah, a little kind of yellow glow. <laughs> and you know, I'm like hugging and kissing everybody. Oh, and, you Jesus, know, did you have to let everybody know? I had to, I got on the phone. I said, oh. you got to go get a gamma globulin shot because, you know, I'm in the hospital now with hepatitis. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, did had, Jeff get sick? So, from real high to real low. Mm. No, he didn't get sick. Hmm. He probably got a hepatitis shot. Mm. You know, and yeah, if, all, if I, only the Board of Health guy had said, get a shot. Right. And he gives me a smallpox shot, which no smallpox was down there. Mm. Anyway. So you're sick for a while. You, you, you lose Four the weeks job. in bed. And I was to do, I had done the research for, it was to be an undercover police <laughs> woman. And I'd done, I'd gone and run around with the New York police, uh, you know, the mm. drug patrol and in Times Square, I mean, in Grand Central Station, looking for drugs, trying to act like a junkie. You know. <laughs> and they're, they're like, trying to act like they're soliciting drugs. And <laughs> they're like pulling in dealers, you know, drug, small time drug dealers. And they said, you know, you, you can watch all this, but when we make the deal, when they change the money, you have to look away unless you want to be a witness to it. So I look away. And in fact, you know, I'm like trying to act like a junkie and, mm. you know, scratching. And this <laughs> one dealer says, what's wrong with her? Why is she acting like that? And I'm like, holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> I've been spotted. As a... <laughs> anyway, yeah, I mean, you're dealing with real. Wow. Anyway, I'd done all the research mm -hmm. and all of that and then lost the job. Mm. And I begged them, please. Please wait for me. And they wouldn't, you know. Yeah. Susan Blakely. Hi, Susan. Got oh. the job, and mm -hmm. I saw the film later, and there she is in all my wardrobe. Oh. <laughs> so, so what happens when you get better? Wait, let's see. God. Christina, anybody oh, yeah. saying anything that that can? Anybody asking questions from Candy? Well, they're saying you guys look beautiful, and and uh, there's a few friends on here. Uh, Butch Cat. Uh, Butch. Hi, Cat Butch. Saying Butch. hi. Which was saying hi before. Mm -hmm. Hi, oh, are you dating David Bowie? <laughs> no. Um, no, he was married to Angela. Somebody watched um, American Graffiti today. Hey, thank you, Michael. Yeah, Neil. Did you enjoy your role? Yes, I did, Robert. I enjoyed my role. House Pesto. <laughs> that was the first thing I said Pestos. when I came in, Butch. You know, he wants an acting job. You got any <laughs> cat food commercials for the old boy? <laughs> I love it. Hi, Bart. Okay, uh, anybody? Oh, was Bart, I dating yeah. David Boy? Oh, God. Well, um, hi, Bob. Hi. Oh, Beth's watching. Hi, Beth. Hey, Beth. Beth's the one that made this happen. Yes. Beth was going to be on the show. She got a gig. I thought she was gigging tonight, but I guess uh, well, she must have done it earlier. Finished. Oh, see, you're getting love. People are, are, are shooting up love over there. Hi, Henry. Hi, Larry. Hi, Joe. Debbie was meant. To be you, Candy yes, Clark. That is so <laughs> Thank you, true. Phil. Hi, Ned. Ned Van Zandt. Do you know him? He's an actor. He's wonderful. Hi, Phil. Oh, I think I do. Yeah, he's pretty wonderful. Marcy. Judy. Hi, Judy. Hi, Matt to Matt. God, I know Matt from New York. Um, okay, so so what's the next game? It's after? such a long-winded story, but, but what, what did is, I do is, next? Is, oh, is, the Manifold Earth. I finally okay. recovered. So how, how do you get that part? How do you get it? That is one juicy Juicy part you Look got at there. You. That Look at the, you. Because I just watched it today. It was like, I can't even, like, because I had vague memory. I was stoned when I watched it the first time. Today I'm stone cold sober. I'm watching it. It's like, that's an amazing part you Oh got my there. gosh. That was just, I was so lucky. Ah, oh, how did you, ha okay, so how did you get that one? How well, I was, uh, you know, I was. Is Bowie, like, already, like, he, is he huge then? He's huge already. Yeah, but I, you know, I... You weren't a fan? I'm, I'm not a big concert person. Okay. I, I, the trouble hurts my ears. I don't go mm -hmm. to a lot of concert. Okay. Very sensitive ears to the high notes. And mm -hmm. when I do go, I have to put a lot of paper and tissue and ear plugs. And, so it's not a great experience for me. 
Don't so you weren't it. you weren't a fan. I really didn't follow his work. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay. Uh, I had seen that film when I lived in New York. That one where he was Ziggy Stardust. Mm -hmm. You know, interesting. You know, guy knitted tight knitted suit, one leg with a knitted pattern, half naked. You know, <laughs> weird looking. Uh, so you were you were yeah, like, was like you not were impressed. Like, yeah, you know he was yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. So um, through Cy Livanoff, I met Nick Rogue, and um, <clears throat> I was kind of hanging out with Nick Rogue, and uh, he had a meeting, and I was waiting for him, and he said, "Here's the script." Um, you want to read it while I'm in? It was like a two-hour meeting, so I said, oh, okay. And so I read the script, called him The Man Who Fell to Earth. And he, when he came out of the meeting, he said, so what'd you think? I said, I thought it was great. It's a great script. You should do it. And he said, you want to be in it? And I'm like, oh my. Yes! <laughs> Another one Another just thing fell just... into your lap. Yeah. It's, wow. I've had a very charm life. Did you After my to... first section of hard luck, I, you know, everything turned great. Um, Did you have to audition? No. I just, he just gave me the part. Oh. But the film wasn't, you know, financed or anything. I just oh. had a script and a part. So you didn't even read with David first? No. Nothing. No. He didn't even meet you? No. He didn't have approval? No. No. He, he, he wasn't even cast. Oh. I was the first person cast. Oh, but it wasn't a, a part, it wasn't a film ready to go. Right. It had no financing. It was like just a script. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I could have gotten aced out at any time. You know how people say, yeah, you can be in my movie. And then, you know, it mm -hmm. never happens. Or mm -hmm. they hire someone else that has more of a draw or, you know, But you're an change. Academy Award nominee. Uh, That's yeah, pretty but, good stuff right you there. You know, that's helped, in, but it hasn't you know, rolled out the red carpet mm -hmm. to my life. You know, mm -hmm. I've always had to try out for stuff, except for this time. Wow. And, um... So how long does it take till it actually gets into production? It took, well, I had the script for about six or seven months before they started happening. They made an office, you know, out of someone's house, and, you know, the money came through, and so they started casting. Mm -hmm. And they were tossing around different... Uh, actors for the role. In fact, Nick Rogue was thinking of Michael Crichton because the character was, uh, in the book, was very, very tall. I forgot that he was tall. an actor before he started. Yeah, movie. very, very tall. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I really didn't have a lot of opinion mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was my place to, you know, say anything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, I think this lady named Arlene Sellers, or maybe it was Maggie Abbott, one of those ladies said, how about David Bowie? And I'm like, that's a great idea. And so uh, David Bowie uh, was living on Doheny mm -hmm. in, a, in a rental. And so uh, I think Nick had met him previously. And mm -hmm. then Nick and I went to his rental and met him. And uh, I think at that point he was just like, yeah, let's go. And so... Um, Buck Nobody Henry got more like an alien. Than yeah, him. and what? A, yeah, Buck Henry. Buck and, Henry and, and, and Reb Torn. Torn. Ah. And the next thing I knew, we were headed to New Mexico, mm -hmm. and it was an all British uh, crew, huh. which was very unusual. Mm -hmm. And Nick brought his all his people in mm -hmm. and put them up here in New Mexico, and um, we started shooting. And I was really glad that I wasn't impressed with David Bowie because, or I hadn't seen him in concert except for that one film, which mm -hmm. was like, oh, you know, interesting guy, makeup, you know, half naked on stage, spacey. And I saw so, that tour. Yeah. When I was in college. I saw him on stage yeah. through that tour. It's and you were surprise. impressed, but I, I was. Like, was. You know, like I said, I wasn't a concert person. Mm -hmm. So, um, we, you know, we so what was he, so what was that relationship like? Like, how was he to deal with? Was he? He was great. He really wanted to, you know, be successful in the part. He was very down to earth. He liked to run lines, which is always so important to me to run, 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 run dialogue because 
that's the only way I can learn. I don't have a photographic memory. Mm -hmm. And so it's all by repetition, repetition, mm -hmm. repetition until everyone's blue in the face and bored with it. But um, David, because he's a musician, mm -hmm. is used to rehearsing. You right, know? right. They go from one arena to the next and they still have to rehearse these old songs that they've done one million times, mm -hmm. they still go out and do the sound check and rehearse and mm -hmm. sing and then the concert happens. Mm -hmm. So uh, he was very amenable. That was, you know, no big deal to him. And so we would be shooting one scene but running the lines for the next scene because there was a lot of dialogue. I cannot so much believe talking. <laughs> how much you're in that movie. You, 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 I mean, you're huge in that I movie. I know, that movie. And, and then, okay, so then there's all of you and David get down. I mean, David does full front. They do full frontal yeah. nudity. I saw his penis Maybe today. It stop it. I, you didn't, I didn't have to stop it. Put it on pause. Although I, I will admit that I did roll it back and watch it again. Oh. I did. Was that his penis? Wait a minute, that is. He was naked. What, Christina? Is somebody saying something? Oh, I hear us laughing. I, um, you know, I got to stay dressed. I had like a slip on and no, a bra. I could have sworn you were no, naked. No, no, not in that scene. They hired a woman with an older body. Really? And so David is like, you know, rolling around because, with a yeah. sixty-year-old woman. <gasps> yes. Wow. Yeah, I thought you that have to was go back. You. No, no, no. That's and you know right. what? The boobs were different in two shots. I noticed that. In one shot, they're in like this push up bra and they're like really voluptuous. And then in the other shot, they're more normal boobs. And I. Wow. They hired an actress who was very brave, and so was David, because he's like into it. I mean, he is into it with this. 60 years. Maybe she's older, a 65 year old actress. Wow. Or body double or whatever. Wow. And, um, yeah. And so, how was that whole... I mean, because you're really the, a, a star of that movie. That's... I mean, because American Graffiti was a very... Um, what's the... I can't even think of the word. Uh, what, um, when it's the whole cast. It's a... What ensemble. Is uh, thank you. It's, yeah, more of an ensemble piece. Whereas this one, you're really, like, front and center, like this whole movie. Yeah, Mary Lou and... It was a tricky to do because Mary Lou starts out young and winds up, you know, mm -hmm. a blousy kind of alcoholic, <laughs> you know. And boy, that makeup was and really tough. The hair in that movie was so very... many wigs. Mm -hmm. Martin Samuel, hey Martin, uh, genius hair uh, guy mm -hmm. who's done a lot of movies since then, um, had me in wigs and you know and all this. <laughs> Rubber on my face was really tough. I s there was rubber on your face? Yes, at the end when Mary Lou is oh. older. Oh. And I had to like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it would t I did a, I added up all my hours. Every day I keep track of my hours. Uh, and I spent 96 and a half hours sitting in the makeup chair. Oh my God. And uh, that's two 40-hour work weeks wow. just sitting there getting stuff glued to my face. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, you didn't want to crack it. So I had to eat, you know, through milkshakes <laughs> through a straw. And I'd tell people, don't make me, don't make me laugh because it won't crack it. Don't make me laugh. And I'd only use the, the, the rubber, you know, when we did a scene. But otherwise, I was like this all day long. And don't make me laugh. It's like 96 and a half hours to get this on. Jesus. So now, did you, did you guys know, what was the expectation for the film when you were I expected it? it to be a huge hit. You did? Yes. Mm hmm and it was a dismal failure, mm -hmm. failure because it was. I saw it in England, mm -hmm. and it was the director's cut. Nick Rogue spent one year editing this mm -hmm. with uh, uh, Graham Clifford, who was his editor, mm -hmm. and it, it was bought by this company called Cinema Five, which was kind of the Miramax of the day back mm -hmm. then, mm -hmm. and it was an art house mm -hmm. dis distributor, and his his whole like motto or whatever business motto was you know we put out films the ed edit you know the director's version but this time 
he saw dollars and he mm -hmm. thought, well, I'm going to... It was two hours and 23 minutes, the original uncut version. Mm -hmm. And he thought, we're going to turn it over every two hours and we're just going to make a fortune. Well, he hired someone that uh, edited commercials, you know, and this editor like chopped it up mm -hmm. within a week. A mm -hmm. year's worth of work got mm -hmm. chopped up within a week and then it was put out and I was going to do you know I don't mind doing publicity mm -hmm. I don't mind going on the road mm -hmm. you know and I really was behind the film mm -hmm. I loved it so much mm -hmm. and so um, go to New York and I'm all excited and they put me up at the Sherry Netherlands you know it's the big time mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. and <laughs> I just talked to Don Don Rugoff was the man's name the owner of that uh, company Cinema 5 and I said I'd really like to see the film but you know get a refresher before I go out and promote mm -hmm. it and get it fresh in my mind again so I'm sitting in a theater and I think I'm pretty much by myself mm -hmm. and I see this film and it is chop I like probably blanched you, you had seen the director's cut right I'm like oh, oh my oh. god it was chopped to bits mm -hmm. and you know they had it was, you see only now the director's cut because I made sure that that disappeared. Is that true? Yes. Because I, I did see it. It was very long. It yes, was. it's two, two hours yeah. and 23 mm -hmm. minutes. That's the director's cut. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, that's not what hit the theater. No. And it was a, people see it and they're like, what the heck? We, you know, you couldn't understand. It's a complicated enough story. It is a Two hours story. and 23 minutes. Because mm -hmm. going back and forth in time. Mm -hmm. So when they chopped it up, it... It was just pictures, basically, and, you know, mismatched dialogue. It didn't oh, wow. make any sense. Mm -hmm. And they ruined it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they told me, okay, you know, and I'm committed now to do a big line uh, oh, for say. Cinema 5 uh -huh. and saying how great this film is mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. And uh, so I'm trying, and they have a their P own PR person sitting in the room with me. And I'm like going on and on how great it is and how, you know, David Bowie, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, blah. blah. And, uh, and so the PR guy had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so then I felt like a prisoner of war. Like I'm like making this really stiff, you know, like trying to blink out S O S with my eyelids. Help me. Anyway, he goes to the bathroom and I say, I'm lying. The film is ruined. It stinks. It's cut to bits. You know. Oh you're, my god. You know, and then so the guy comes back and I'm like, and so David <laughs> Bowie. <laughs> Did you get in trouble for that? No. I that no. night I went to bed. Mm -hmm. I went. You know. Finally the interviews were over. I was mm -hmm. lying through my teeth mm -hmm. and just a nervous wreck. And so I called Pat McQueen and I said. I can't do this. I can't lie for these people. I don't know these people. <laughs> you know, they've ruined the film. And she said, go to the airport, get on a plane, and come back home. So I did, and I hid out at her house, and they were calling me you every... Oh, my God. Over and over, and Pat was lying for me. Well, I haven't talked to her. I haven't seen her. Wow. And I just totally disappeared, which was, you know... I hated doing that, but I just couldn't promote this... Botched did, mess. Did Bowie promote it? No. Uh -huh. I did. Did he Did he know it was a mess? I don't know. You, you know, didn't talk once, to him about it no, afterwards? No. He and I mm -hmm. didn't have that kind of relationship where we were like on the phone with right. each other. No. Mm -hmm. He had his, you know, space. Mm -hmm. We worked together very well, but when the workday was done, he would go off with his entourage mm -hmm. and they had a big rental and, mm -hmm. you know, and... We really we hung out a little bit, but not a lot. And well, you had wonderful rapport on the screen. Yeah, we had a it was real good, rapport really on fast, the screen, yeah, but, fantastic. Uh, you know, there was no real social scene, right? Right. Like you know, with graffiti. Mm -hmm. And anyway, so years go by, mm -hmm. and uh, I never forgot the Amer uh, the man who fell to earth. I just like it, just bugged the. No. Pesto. Pesto Butch. Pesto's here. <laughs> he wants a commercial so bad. That, that's so funny. You didn't say that. Um, oh, Ned Van Zandt. Hi. 
Hi, Ned. He's saying this is a great interview. Both. <laughs> oh, he's from Fort Worth also. Oh. Yeah. Hey, Ned. That's what he's saying. <laughs> hey, Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Um, yes, yeah, so, so, so anyway, years, later, like years go by. So it, 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 it just tanks. It just totally it just, fails. Okay. And it comes out in, vi you know, video and mm -hmm. crap. Anyway, it's so upsetting. All that work, you know, like years of work and... <sighs> And it's really drive. your big, it's it your was, starring vehicle. And I was going to run another Academy <laughs> Award no. campaign, and I think I did, but it was, mm. you know, there was nothing to see. Yeah. But I did, I ran another campaign. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, <laughs> years go by, mm -hmm. and I'm living in New Jersey. And um, I think, I find out that... Uh, the owner of the company is no longer there. Mm -hmm. So I thought, I'm gonna call the uh, PR department of that uh, Cinema 5 and I'm gonna talk to them and I'm gonna give them a pitch. So I speak to the man. He's How many years later is this? Like, I don't know. 10, more, less? 10 or more, Okay. a long time. Okay. But I never gave up mm -hmm. thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Um, pesto is running around. Anyway, um, so I never give up on the thing. I call the guy, mm -hmm. and uh, he's a stranger, and I say, hey, my name is Candy Clark, and I was in the movie The Man Who Fell to Earth, which you probably know about. And I said, you know, and this was a complete lie, I said, I get asked about that film all the time. <laughs> I said, so many people are so interested in that film. I said, you know, you ought to bring it back out, the full director's cut. I said, you don't have to, you know, just use the old poster, put a banner across it saying uncut version, director's cut. Just, you know, and I, I said, you know, you know, they'll line up around the block. You know, there's people that really want to see that. And so he said, great idea. So uh, I call him a few yeah. weeks later. And I said, I'm just following up, you know, how's it going with, you know, and he said, well, bad news. The, uh, our print, our negative was all cut up. The guy cut up the negative. Oh my God. So I said, well, I know where to get it. I said, uh, you know, Barry Spikings, Michael Dealey, uh, British Lion Films. I can give you their number. <laughs> Very helpful. Here's the names, here's the number. Call them up. They have a, a full a full negative. And so he, the guy did. And then it came out with a banner across it. <laughs> wow, you orchestrated this whole thing. Yeah, I was worth a try. And so slowly but surely, the old version, the old, you know, VC videotapes mm -hmm. all got thrown away. And now all you see is the uh, director's cut. Wow, and so, and how long did it take till it built up? Because it became a huge cult. Yeah, thing. I mean, it just, you it know, just slowly, slowly but surely. And did you ever talk to David after that? To like, I, I was doing a play call, a couple of white chicks sitting yeah. around talking mm -hmm. in New York, and their mm -hmm. whole gimmick was they would change the actors, mm -hmm. you know, and that play ran for a long time, mm -hmm. and they would get new a actors every couple of months. So I was, that was down in the village, and mm -hmm. I ran into him there, and we had a cup of coffee. But, you know, he's... Was oh, he happy? Time, was he yeah. happy that I don't think we talked about it. Oh. It might not have happened mm -hmm. at that point. Mm -hmm. And uh, right after the film, I was really I lived in my apartment on Vista Street mm -hmm. and uh, knock at the door and there was David Bowie in a big limousine out front. Yeah. This was right after the film, oh. but around Christmas time. And there he was and he brought me this little rhinestone pen. And wished me Merry Christmas. That's and, so yeah. lovely. And then he I was gave gone. Goosebumps. Yeah, and then he was gone. That's lovely. But that was kind of after the film. Did you Very ever sweet. see him in concert after that? I did. I saw him mm -hmm. as the thin white Duke. Duke, and I'm so glad I didn't see him before because I was totally, you know, groupie time. And I was really, after that, I'm like, oh man, that guy's <laughs> great. I love him. <laughs> You know, and if you would have done that, if I done that, it would, it would have been it would yeah. have spoiled the relationship. I yeah, would have yeah. been too gaga mm -hmm. and too. I would have been like you. <laughs> <laughs> I love him in his frontal nudity. And, oh my I, God. I just I'm, I'm, I'm giving a plug because just two weeks ago I went and saw a Bowie celebration that all of his 
all of the original musicians that played with him, so um, Carmine Rojas and, and uh, all those guys are, are take have taken Bowie's, t taken all that music out and they're on the road and they're going around the world. And so I saw it with uh, Bernard Fowler fronting uh, and also Joe um, Sumner, who is Sting's son, is the other front man who, who mm. sings Bowie. And it's a fantastic show. It's, it's spectacular. And, it, and they bring David back to life. It's wonderful. I was going to go and, you know, he did that play. David Bowie did. And yeah, I yeah. I kept thinking, I've got to buy a ticket. I'm going to go opening mm. night and surprise him. Mm. And, uh, you know, you just keep putting that mm. off. And I'm thinking, well, when it comes to L.A., I'll see it. And then I'll go for opening night and surprise him. And then, you know, I saw pictures of him in that opening night. I'm like, wow, he doesn't look good. I didn't go. Mm. And I thought, wow, he looks really kind of strained and gray and didn't look like himself. And then, you know, a couple of weeks later, he had died, and that was such a shock. Mm. You know, you go in every morning, you turn on your computer, and then you're hit with yeah. either Robin Williams or David Bowie or, you know, it's just like... Did you know Robin? Yes. And that was a real shock, too. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, that was... You know, nobody really knew that he was, you know, and his friends that did know, they really kept it secret. They were very respectful mm -hmm. of his wishes of not alerting the public. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then he was just gone. Oh, All right, so any, so any other, so, so while oh, we're talking, look, look, at oh, how, look, look how beautiful they are. Beautiful, they just beautiful. Very um, handsome. So, uh, but he did look like an alien. I mean, he's the, no, the he perfect, perfect. He was the perfect, was perfect person for that His part. Hair, everything. Um, so, what other? What? What? Oh, so you did. When you, okay, so you did. When you coming back, Red Rider? Which I did. You read the thing? I did it in college before the movie came yeah, out. Yeah, I saw that. You had I was done in that. a little lab show, and so Marjo Gordner. I had major. Cr I know you married him. I had major crush on Marjo Gordner. Yeah, so. he was very handsome. Very uh, handsome. I, I think I really fell in fell for his persona when I saw that film Marjo and uh, that's a crazy story so can you tell everybody a little bit about Marjo like what his childhood was he was a very talented uh, child preacher evangelist mm -hmm. and his family you know toured when he was you like know, they little, did tents right? <laughs> tents you know he's, he's like little yes he was like three and four and he had a really good memory mm -hmm. and he could memorize scripture he had a brother mm -hmm. who couldn't really memorize and mm -hmm. his his parents were really hard on the kids mm -hmm. because that was their paycheck you know mm -hmm. and you know they were very brutal to those boys mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's just going to make you sad if I tell everything about their history I, I there's a book that he wrote that he spills the beans on his parents mm -hmm. but um you know as a result of you know, he had to kiss the old, the purple-haired ladies, and the whole motivation was to get the dollar out of them. And mm -hmm. he exposes all that in his film, right. Marja. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he actually is the one who blew the roof off Evangelist as being fakes. Yeah. Right? He's the one who single-handedly... Yeah, like, he cut his own down. throat. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, he wanted to be an actor, and mm -hmm. he, uh, you know, uh, wrote, you know, got Mark Medoff to... Mm -hmm. Write a script and then... He got Mark Madoff to write the script? Well, I'm not sure the whole back okay. history, but... Right. Anyway, there was a script. And, mm -hmm. and we went and shot in El Paso. Mm -hmm. And uh, a spontaneous, like, marriage in Juarez. And as I was doing this, <laughs> I'm thinking... No, I shouldn't be doing this, but I went through it. How long did I didn't you know want to hurt other? his feelings. How long did you know each other? Not long. It you, was just you, one of those. You married him because you didn't want to hurt I his feelings. I didn't want to hurt his feelings. We were in Juarez and it was oh like getting God. ahead of me. You're you know? really like, nice. Yeah, I'm yeah, too nice really sometimes, nice. you know. Yeah, how do you break the news? <laughs> so, um, Lynn says, so proud of... Um, this I have to put my glasses on. If you you orchestrated with the film candy, yeah, you did it. She's she's proud of you for hey, what you did with you. Um, the man who fell to earth. So okay, so now you're doing when you're coming back, Red Rider, and that yeah, that was okay. You know, I didn't have a big part in that, but it was you know a nice trip to El Paso, and I really like El Paso. And you got married <laughs> briefly, <laughs> briefly. 
Okay, so highlights after that. So after Red Rider, what, what, so you have Buffy the Vampire Slayer, that's much later. Um, yeah. Not that much later, actually. That was just a, a kind of a favor mm -hmm. to uh, the director. So what, what things have you done since that, like tw Twin Peaks recently? Yeah. Was that fun? I was in Blue Thunder. I was in, God, more American Graffiti. I've been in over 50. Well, uh, no, almost more. 70 different wow. productions. Yes. Okay. And so and did anything besides Men Fell to Earth, American Graffiti, anything really stand out as something that was like just a great experience for you? I think all films are a great experience. Mm -hmm. I, it's like being with a circus. You get there real early in the morning, mm -hmm. the little food wagon is steaming away. You know, there's a lot of cords, a lot of hustle bustle. You, you know, you order your eggs and then you go sit in the dressing room and they start strapping on the makeup and doing your hair. And it's a, like a social scene and the music's playing and it's like five in the morning and you're getting all revved up, you're having your coffee. And then, you know, you go to your uh, little dressing room, you know, sometimes it's big, sometimes it's, you know, small. And then you wait. <laughs> and then you wait. And then you wait. <laughs> and then your makeup is starting to get smudgy. And then you think, well, maybe I should take a nap. And then, you know, you wake up, your eyes are all puffy. And then you're waiting. But, um, you know, that's what it is. <laughs> a lot of waiting. And uh, then finally it's your turn. And, you, you know, you're all revved up again. And, you know, you do your scene. And... And, um, you know, it's a lot of fun. It's really a lot of fun. So what, what candy, is there anything that ahead of you that you haven't done yet that you'd love to do? Is there a part you'd love to play? Would you, if, uh, how about like Netflix and Amazon and that kind of stuff? Does that, does oh, that well, you? you know, I, I don't subscribe to cable, so I'm mm -hmm. kind of out of the loop, but you know, there's a lot of real gritty stuff, which I like. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that American horror mm -hmm. thing, you know, that I love character work. You know, I always fancy myself to be, you know, Louise Cheney, Lon Cheney's <laughs> daughter, you know, the woman of a thousand faces. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I really get a kick out of doing characters and monsters. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've done, got to do a, a few horror things mm -hmm. and those are a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I was in The Blob, I got blobbed. And, I was in Amityville blocked. 3D and I got burned to death. <laughs> you know, those are really fun. And then I was in Cold Moon and I turned into a monster. And, you know, I, I have pictures. A lot of fun. I really enjoy acting and, um, you know, just being on the set. And, you know, I kind of enjoy auditions, but, you know, I never really conquered that as well as some people have. And, um, you know, but once I'm there and I've got it memorized, it's a lot of fun. Everyone Did anything is. get away from you? Because this this show, Game Changers, really, the focus is to, to interview people, my heroes, and how did you do what you did? And I'm guessing there had to be, at some point, in this, in this I can't even believe how things fell into your lap. Did, you, <laughs> did anything get away from you that you Oh, millions of things. Millions of things. So many losses. So many losses. But, you know... Because that's part of the deal. You have to have those, too. Well, you know, because of my lack of audition skills, and, you know, I've gotten a lot better at it, but, uh, you know, my age group, you know, there, there is such a thing as aging out of the business. Mm. It's you not look, a sad thing. You look it's not a sad amazing, thing. Amazing, by the way. I'm not saying you're acting age, business is like the modeling business, and uh, it's all about photography mm -hmm. and it's all about beauty, and uh, you know. And then there is some acting, but mainly it's about you know looking the part, looking pretty, and you know that's what I think, and. Um, you know, my manager, Pat, always told me, after age 40, it's going to start dissipating. And, you know, she was right. Mm -hmm. You know, and she was an actress and she was a model before that and a spokesperson. Mm -hmm. And then she became a very successful manager. Mm -hmm. She had Harrison, she had Cindy, she mm -hmm. had everybody from American Graffiti. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's true. It's a young person's gang. There is a few 
like Meryl Streep and a few that, you know, can transcend and go forward. Mm -hmm. But uh, Judy Dench and mm -hmm. people like that. But, you know, then there's the rest of us. But I've been very, very lucky. And I'm in a couple of really great films that the fans never get tired of. And right. that's American Graffiti, mm -hmm. number one, really. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, you know, I've met so many people and gone so many places because of American Graffiti. Which kind of changed American culture. I mean, <laughs> you know, it, the, the, the Happy Days came, for those of you who are TV people, <laughs> Happy Days came after American Graffiti and it got greenlit because of I'm friends yeah, with Edison and Donnie. It did. And, and, it, and I think it was a whole different story, basically, but because they saw the success of Graffiti, you know, they kind of changed it to yes. more of a, you know, thing like graffiti with a tough guy, you know, Harry Henry Winkler and, you know, the Ron Howard got the same part, basically, right. Right. that he had in American Graffiti. Right. You know, the good guy in the checkered shirt, you know, and... Um, but you have know, you seen? Have you stayed? Into, like, have you seen Ron? Since? I saw him at an Academy uh, thing event, mm -hmm. and you know, he I hadn't seen him in a long, long time. And I could tell he was a little remote, you know. Mm -hmm. But that's okay, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Fine. Um, you As know, he's transcended American graffiti. I'm still in American graffiti. Well, that's not such a bad place. To it's be. a great place to be. And really. there's a lot of fan stuff. You do. There's a you huge, do a lot of stuff, huge right? Huge fan base for mm -hmm. American graffiti. It's like really, it's like being in the Wizard of Oz or mm -hmm. uh, you know, when a, a film like that or Gone with the Wind. It's a classic. It's in the best 100 films of all time. That's so amazing. By the American film. 100 films. They make 100 films in a week. Right, right. This is the best 100 films of all time. That's so phenomenal. And we're there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I take great pride in that. And uh, it makes, be. you know, that... I've seen people with graffiti tattoos on. And uh, people get teary-eyed uh, reminiscing about it. It's where they took their wife on the mm -hmm. first date. They're mm -hmm. still married, you know, mm -hmm. on tears. And, you know, it means a lot to people. And I always remember that, you know, although when I'm, you know, signing autographs or whatever, that it's their first time to talk to me about it. I've heard these, all right. the questions, I've right. heard all the statements, but it's always their first time. So I respect that. That's and, lovely. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, it's a lot of fun. And the whole hot rod world with the cars and, you know, there's people that relive that whole era and they... Mm -hmm. They live in that era. They love that era. Wow. So, I'm very lucky. Well, Candy, thank you so much for doing this. And and um, and I and you invited me to a really cool premiere that I didn't get to go to with, okay. with you tonight. That um, that you promised me there'll be more, and I'm I'm, I'm going to yes. hold you to that. Okay. And thank you so much for only doing if this. you give me this ring. I, it's it's I great. Really isn't it? want this. I know it's really good. <laughs> it's um, and, my eyes and, so many times. Uh, for those of you out there, Game Changers next week we'll be back with Amy Aquino, and Amy is killing it on Bosch. The, you don't have cable, but Bosch, I, I binged it uh, um, a, a couple of months ago, the whole thing. Loved it. I'm waiting for the new season. My friend Chris Browning's in the new season. Anyway, Amy plays the lieutenant. She's the one woman in a man's Ooh. world, and she's fantastic. And I saw her socially a couple weeks ago and begged her to do the show. She'll be here next week. Yay. And uh, um, George Shapiro, um, who is the, the man behind Jerry Seinfeld and, and Carl Reiner, will be here in a few weeks. And uh, Jimmy Vivino from from Conan and Mary and Ross from Happy Days. Yay. Mrs. C will be doing Women Who Write in the living room on the 30th of October, my birthday party. You have to come. And um, anyway, thank you so much for being here and thank you. I adore you. Yum, 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 yum. I love her. <laughs> See you soon. Thanks, Christina. Bye. <laughs>